Tags, tags, tags. The new update for the Cypher system in Foundry Virtual Tabletop happened, and Marco added something new that I've been waiting for for a little while since he let me know he was doing it. And that is a slight rework of how tags work. And oh, they are so much easier to use now. Not that they were difficult to use before, but now it's a click of a button. You don't have to type anything. So I will do a more structured video on these in the future. One with actually is will be properly part of my Cypher Basics series. But I decided for today, it would be more important for people to just quickly get a rundown of how this works and to give some examples. So that's what I'm going to do here. I've got a couple of character sheets here. We're going to start with Exemplar the Defaultist. To show this off, I've done two things for Exemplar the Defaultist here. First of all, their focus is Shepherd's Demons, which gives them this ability, Demon Shape. Demon Shape allows them to turn into a Demonic Ice Wolf, Demon Fire Bat, Demonic Humanoid, or back into their human shape. And they get different attacks and armors and even a skill and whatnot, depending on which shape that they're in. Also, I've given them in their equipment a Battle Axe of Ultramite that, when active, will give them a plus 10 to their might score. But let's go in and first of all, we'll give you the brief rundown. What are tags and where can you find them? So if your character sheet does not have this tags tab, it's because it's not turned on yet. This is this right here. There's a little checkbox for the tags tab. Um, Click that and your tags will come up and you can just like any other category, you can name your tags. In this case, I've named them for the forms and the artifact powers for two of the sections because that's what they're going to be used for in this character. When we get to the second character sheet, I'll show you a different for use for them. So right now we have the forms and artifact powers. I also have hide archive checked. We'll uncheck this later and I'll show you why I have this checked. Let's go through. So as we can see in combat, we are currently wielding a battle axe. We have our unarmed attack. We have a shield uh, in our abilities. We have uh, standard abilities. These are actually are not going to really change that much. Skills, uh, the um, ascertains emotions, motives, dispositions, and intimidate, like all of these skills are here. Uh, there will be a change here as we go into demon form. I'll show you then. And then, of course, our equipment that we generally, most of this is just going to be in our human form. So what happens when we change forms? Well, let's say we go into fire bat form. We turn into a little bat. All right, we've clicked it. Nothing's happened. Or has it? So first of all, skills, you'll see nothing's changed in skills. We don't worry about that. So we go to combat, our shield and our battle axe and even our unarmed attack and everything has all disappeared. And instead we now have this bite ability, which does one damage and then plus three fire damage. And we have this armor ability, which I should have named and I didn't name. It should have been like fire bat resist resistance. Whatever, I'm leaving it in. This is just versus fire, so we don't have this adding onto our total armor here, because it's a special ability. And then equipment, you'll notice all of our equipment's gone, uh, including the battle axe. Why? Because we're a bat. We can't use any of the equipment, okay? Same thing if we go into, like, ice wolf form, the equipment is gone. Abilities would be about the same. Combat, we now have a ice wolf form bite attack that does three damage plus one cold. We now have the ice wolf, uh, I would have should have named it as resistance, whatever, which is five versus cold instead of versus fire. And skills are all the same. We go into our demon form. You're going to notice skill changed. This intimidate changed from intimidate to intimidate demonic. Why? Because although it's still trained, because they're trained in intimidate stuff, the demon version has an asset right here. So you actually get your free asset because you're in demon form now. And then combat. Um, I so the way I've done it, um, I don't. This is really up to your GM, but I allowed them to keep the battle axe in their demon form. But they also get their claw and bite. Um, they get their demon scales, which actually does give them some armor. And they get their demonic resistances, which is versus cold and fire. But it doesn't apply to their total normal, normal armor score. Abilities, once again, stays about the same. Because uh, your abilities don't tend to change for forms like that. And then equipment, they kept their battle axe, but all the other equipment is gone. So, that's pretty cool, right? And 
The way this is set up, there's two types of tags that you can have for these. There's the exclusive tags, which means that you can have none of them on, in which case anything with those tags on them doesn't show up. You can, or you can have one of them on. When you click it, only one of them can appear at a time, and you see all the equipment came back in human form. But if you click it on Ice Wolf, all the equipment is gone. You can only have one of these exclusive tags up at a time. Uh, so you also have non-exclusive tags. Now, if the, the way this works is uh, you can have non-exclusive tags on items, abilities, skills, just like the exclusive tags. You can have it unarchive things with the non-exclusive tags, but you can have multiple non-exclusive tags on at once and mix and match with exclusive tags. So, for example, since we're holding... This battle axe, we are not holding this battle axe. Let's go to human form. Since we're holding this battle axe of ultra might, why don't we turn this on? Oh, look at that. Our might went from 10 to 20. Yeah, I'll toggle it a couple of times. Because there's some cool things within the tags. We'll get, let's get to that right now, actually. So let's go through the basic types of tags. So in a tag, you've got the name of the tag, um, the picture, if you want, I, do, I don't bother changing them personally. Uh, you can have the description of the tag, which can be useful if there's like other things within it you need to know. And then, of course, in here, we've got a couple of things. Sorting, that's if, you know, you have multiple categories here. You can click and drag between them or you can set it right here if you want to change it. This is the checkbox. If it's going to be an exclusive tag where only one of them can be on at once versus a non-exclusive tag. And you can actually have adjustments to your stats here for your pools and your edges. So that's what I did with the Battle Axe of Ultramite. You'll see the Might pool has an adjustment of 10, which means that it brings it up by 10. I believe you can actually do negative modifiers in here. So you can do like minus two and you see it would actually bring it to eight instead of 10. That's sort of how you get the tags set up. You can have your exclusives, which is one at a time, and you can have your non-exclusives, which you can mix and match and have like a billion of them here if you wanted and have them whichever ones you wanted turned on or off. So how do you use the tags? Well, it used to be that you had to write like uh, the number sign, or like for you kids, I guess these days, like the hashtag. No longer is that the case, thanks to Marco. First thing we're going to do, let's go to, say, demon form for a second. Okay, so we'll see in demon form, we're missing most of our equipment, right? Let's go to our settings. I'm going to uncheck the hide archive, because that's how things are disappearing on us. I'm going to go here, and you'll see all of our stuff is still there. Or we go to combat, and we see all of the combat things from all the different forms are still there. They're just hidden in different states. Let's go through why. It's really, really easy. So let's go through the, let's say like the claw bite for the demon form. This is, if you're familiar at all with the foundry setup for a weapon, this is standard what the foundry setup should look like. But there's the tags thing here. And I don't believe this shows up if there's no tags at all. But there are the tags thing. So with the tags here, any of the tags that you have clicked highlighted, so like a little the little dots go away and it's a little bit lighter and whatnot, is the ones that are active. So for example, this claw bite is only active when the demon is active. Whereas if it's fire bat, human, or ice wolf, it is not. It goes away. And you'll see if we click the click demon off and say put it to fire bat. You see, it actually it actually went away on us, uh, and you can so you can have this in multiple states. So let's, for example, let's go to this equipment piece. Let's go to the battle axe of ultra might. You'll see I have this selected for demon and human. So if we're in the either demon or human form, then it will appear because those are the ones that are positively checked. And then in firebat and ice wolf, they don't appear. So it is as simple as just clicking these and making sure that those are the tags for anything, skills, combat, abilities, or equipment. Nice and easy. Another really cool thing is you can interact with these right in the description. So let's go to our abilities. Let's go to demon shape here, a quick one. So in demon shape, I've clicked so that it has all of them. Because demon shape is so normally most of the abilities here. Let's close this. Most of the abilities. I don't have any of them clicked because I don't want them to hide or unhide. But for demon shape, I did all of them. 
so that they have the buttons at the bottom. And you can actually go into your demon shape and say, oh, no, I want to be fire bat or human or back to demon. You know, anything like this. Let's go back to human. And you can you actually operate it right within the ability as a result. See, we're back to human. So we are back to wielding our battle axe and unarmed attacks. Here, let's hide things to make it easier. There you go. And we have our shield out and stuff like this. Awesome. 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 That makes that super, super easy. So now we can switch between exclusive tags. If you've got something like transformations or maybe like you're doing a superhero game, that's, that's not the unmasked where you've got like your teen and non-teen forms. Like maybe it's just like a transformation for your superhero or different identities. Uh, there's a ton of different reasons that you may want to use these tags. They can be very handy in multiple ways, very transformative. Now, there's another use for sing for things much like this, of course, and that is the recursions if you're playing in the strange. If you're not familiar with the strange, your character changes slightly as you translate from one area to another. So let's bring up Exemplar the Strange. This one's not as filled out as the other one. So in this one, I have it set up that they can trans they can go from currently from one of two worlds, either on Earth or Cube World. And it is set up that say in Cube World, their focus currently is abide in stone and goes to Cube World. So what you do is when you create a new one, you can say this is gonna be uh, my new world, and their focus is gonna be being a badass, which is not a focus anywhere that I know of, but it is there now. So you see, we're still in Abides in Stone, and we are on Cube World. And if we go to my new world, you'll see we are now a weird paradox who being a badass on my new world. And it changes us to what world we're on, what focus we're on, stuff like this. And these work much like exclusive tags, where only one recursion can be on at a time. Although, unlike exclusive tags, uh, the you cannot turn it off. You have to be in one of the worlds. You can't be in no world, <laughs> so to speak. And the exclusive tags are not bound to this. You can have exclusive tags and non-exclusive tags as well in the recursions. So, <clears throat> how do you get here? Well, the game mode, if you set it, normally it's set to the cipher system, just set it to the strange and you're going to get this. Uh, you can still have tags. If we turn it on, you, can, you see, we can still have a tags area where we can have like any sort of like new tag here. And we can actually turn this into an exclusive tag. And you see the exclusive tag does not affect the recursion that we're on, you can still have multiple exclusive and non-exclusive tags that can mix perfectly fine. Because I found that was one of the issues with the strange is it's a lot of bookkeeping trying to keep up the differences between your foci because your focus could change things. Your focus could change some of your stats. Your focus could change like a numerous different abilities and maybe equipment, things like this. This allows you to change between the recursions so much better and so much easier because you don't have to go through and like try to type the tags and stuff like that. You can now just clickety clickety and you are fine. And you see we've got right now I've got two abilities, um, uh, one for Earth and one for Cube World. And you see they're set up just like before. You just click the recursion. It's just like setting up with tags. You can click the recursion. You, you can even mix and match. Like if we were like Exemplar the Defaultist where they were like turning into demon forms, but they only could do that in the one world, you could mix and match. You could set up so that they can only do the demon form stuff in that world by also having the exclusive tags and stuff. You can get pretty crazy with it, all things considered. I don't think there's too much more I need to say. This is kind of does a quick rundown. I am going to have a more structured and I want to say like properly put together video on this that will be part of my Cypher Basics videos. But I thought for now, we might as well just do a brief rundown because there's been a lot of people asking about these. And this way we can uh, sort of show off what is happening as far as these concern. I actually have a player that was already using tags in my Sunday game. So the, the live stream, now it's gonna be that much easier for them to figure it out. So 
I think that's it for now. We're going to leave this here. If you have any other questions about tags, feel free to put them in the comments below. Uh, this way I know what things I may need to cover aside from this stuff in the actual proper Cypher Basics video and make sure that everyone gets everything covered that they want to. The tags is a pretty big subject and it's a pretty big deal. I really like them. All right. As always, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a good one, hey? Eh?